Okay, so in the next presentation that I want to do here in unit four, now that we're talking about UI management for our applications, and in particular, we've gotten really good at doing uh, text user interfaces. So here we're really starting now to explore uh, GUI interfaces, which are event driven uh, using Java FX. I want to try to go through just building out our first Java FX application. So a quick overview here is I'm going to give an introduction on what we're going to do over the course of this presentation. We'll look at the Java FX application class. Then we'll look at what it means to implement the start method. Then we'll look into adding a main method to our Java FX application. And then finally, we'll add a scene. So a quick introduction. In this lecture, I will show you how to create your first Java FX application. This lecture thus serves both to introduce you to the core Java FX concepts, as well as to give you some Java FX code you can use as a template for your own experiments. So the Java FX application class, a Java FX application needs a primary launch class. This class has to extend the javafx.application.application .application class. So inside of JavaFX, there's an application package. Inside that application package is an application class. Anything that is a Java application uh, application, anything that's a JavaFX application has to extend the application class to actually start running. So again, recall that the definition of a framework is, is a, uh, it's a set of code where parts are missing and we fill in those parts, we fill in the holes, and then that the framework can start running as a completed application. So one of the holes in the part is to fill out what the application is. And then we get to define our own logic and then JavaFX then manages how to set everything up and then start rendering it to the screen for us. So, and of course, uh, that is a, that's a standard class in Java since Java 8. So here's an example of a subclass of application. And by subclass, we have to define it ourselves, right? So we would import from JavaFX from the application package, the application class, and then we would create our own class, public class, say my FX app, which then extends this application class from JavaFX. And then, so since we are extending this class, there are going to be methods inside that class we have to define in order for our Java FX application to actually run the way we'd expect it to run. So one of the critical methods that every application, everything, every class that is a subclass to application, to Java FX application, has to go ahead and implement a start method. So all subclasses of Java FX application class must implement the abstract start method of the application class, or that you have to be an abstract subclass to application itself, right? If you don't implement it, then you can't be a concrete class. The start method is called when the Java FX application is initially started. And so here is the example of a start method that's implemented. So again, we're going to imp import, okay, this is weird formatting here. We're going to import Java FX application application. So from the application package, we're going to get the application class. We're also going to import just for this example from the stage um, package, the stage class. So then we're going to define our own class, public class, my FX app, and we're going to extend, we're going to make this a subclass to the application so that we can actually use this as our launch point of our Java FX application. So then we're just going to use this annotation to highlight, hey, we're overriding, this is a, uh, we're overriding the abstract method with a concrete definition. So then this is the start method. So the start method is going to go ahead and have um, a parameter that can be passed into it, which is a stage. So you're gonna start a stage inside of the actual window. So remember, each of our windows is its own stage that we can then load scenes into. And so potentially, 
we can throw ex we there are exceptions that can be thrown instead of us managing those exceptions we'll just throw those off so that's just what's happening there then the stage is being passed in as a parameter and that's being handled for us uh, when Java FX invokes the start method. So we'll take the stage that gets passed in and then we're going to set a title to our stage. So here we'll set the title, my first Java FX app. And then if we want any of these changes to the stage to actually appear, to actually become visible, we have to invoke the show method. So uh, if we don't invoke the show method, then nothing that we've done will become visible. So it's always important inside the start method after you set everything up on the way you want it to start, you then tell the stage to essentially open up the curtains and start the show. Okay, let's talk a little bit about adding a main method. You can actually launch a Java FX application without a main method. But if you want to pass command line parameters to the application, then that's when you want to have a main method. So remember, uh, and our command line parameters are those args that get passed in that, str that string array of arguments. So in general, I prefer to add a main method because it makes it more explicit which code launches the application. It shows you what the launch point is. So let's take a look. I, the new code is highlighted in the yellow here. So all of this is the same weird formatting there. Okay, so this is the thing, uh, let me, okay. So this is what we had just looked at previously, the start method. We can also add a main method. And so in our main method, this explicitly highlights how we're launching the application. Now this can be implicitly done for us, but it's always nicer, I think, to be explicit where the launch point of your application is. So we can, we can manually, define our launch point. So public static void main, and then we can take in string arrays. And the nice thing about this is anything that gets passed in here, we can then pass in to the launch method of application. So inside of application, now notice application is a class. It's an abstract class that we're importing from the application package of Java FX. It's got a static method called launch. And so that can take in a string array of arguments. And so we can manually invoke this, which will then launch our application. It'll, it'll cause our application start method to invoke. So the launch method will detect from which class it is called. So you don't have to tell it explicitly what class to launch. And that's all it takes to create Java uh, FX application, really. Uh, that's the that's the critical parts. You have to; those are the things you have to do. And this would actually launch a, a window. Uh, right. So here's a screenshot of the window being opened as a result of the code we just saw. And here we could see that's the title, my first Java FX app, and of course this. Inside of here, what's inside of this box would be the scene. So this is the stage and we have the frame around the stage. And then you have the scene inside of the stage. Now we haven't added anything to this stage or our stage is empty. And so all we can do here would be maximize, minimize or close it. So let's talk a little bit about adding the scene. The previous Java FX examples only open a window, but nothing is displayed inside the window. So to display something inside the Java FX application window, you have to add a scene to the stage object. And so this is done inside of our start method. All the components to be displayed inside of a Java FX application must be located inside of a scene. So the names for stage and scene are again, inspired by theater and again, this is, this is not unique to Java FX. This, these concepts of stage and scenes are something that's kind of universal for uh, computer generated visual models. So like we use these same terminologies when we're talking about game engines, such as Unity. Uh, a stage can display multiple scenes, just like in a theater play. 
Similarly, a computer game could have a menu scene, a game scene, a game over scene, a high score scene. So here is an example of how to add a scene object to the stage along with the simple label. So here I've highlighted the yellow code inside of this block we have. And so inside of our start method, right? So this is where we're gonna start everything that's on our stage. And the very last thing we do in our start method is to show what's on the stage. But if you want something to appear inside the window, we have to set it up before we show it. So this sets the title of the stage. Here we can create a label. A label is, well, it's just that, a label, a piece of text. We're gonna pass in a string, hello world, Java FX. We'll create a new label instance with that string. And we're gonna save that to a local variable, a label local variable. So if I want to gain access to that, that's gonna be inside of my control package. So I'm gonna import from Java FX. There is the scene package. We've already imported the scene class. Well, there's a whole nother package for each, for the scene, uh, for the scene package, which is all the different controls that we can embed into a scene. And so we saw a big listing of that earlier. So one of the controls isn't so much a control, there's no actual input on it. It's just a label that we can, we can uh, a piece of text that we can go ahead and uh, provide. Labels are usually common in web forms to tell you what a, what a, a corresponding uh, field does. Like when you have an input field. So usually the labels that appear bef before that is all grouped in part of the control package. So we'll create a label. And so now that we've defined this label that has this string, we're going to create a new scene because up until this point, we haven't actually created a scene. So to create a scene, we're gonna go ahead and import scene class from the scene package. So our imports are from the application package, to the application class. And that's an abstract class where we have to go ahead and implement the abstract start method. And then we're going to go ahead and from the stage package, go ahead and import the stage class because that's effectively going to be the window that launches inside of our stage. We want to go ahead and create a scene instance. So we're going to import that class and we want to actually put something in the scene. So we're going to just get a label from our control package. So here we create a new label with this text. We're going to save that into a label, a local variable of label data type. Then we're going to create a new scene. And so our scene is going to need a something to put into the scene graph. So we're going to give it a label and then we're going to give it a position or a size, a, a width and a height. So this, so the, these two parameters is how wide is my scene going to be and how high is my scene going to be? And then once I've defined a scene inside of my stage, there is a, a method and an instance method called set scene. And so I can pass a scene instance into set scene, and that'll load the scene's contents onto the stage. And so once I load the scene's contents onto the stage, I can then tell the stage to show, and then whatever's inside that scene will now show inside of the window. And so now what would happen if we go and run that application? would be this right here. So we have our stage here that has the title and my first Java FX app. And then inside of the scene, which is going to be what's inside of the frame, I have the label that had that string, hello world Java FX. And that label, and you could see that um, the, the size of my scene here is 400 by 200. So it's twice as wide as it is long. Whereas if we looked at this, uh, this other one, that, so you see that between the initial frame that had no scene versus this one, we could see those two parameters helped affect the size of our stage.
or the scene, the scene gets to dictate how big the stage is. Excellent. So let's take a look at doing that same thing, building out our first application of Java FX, but using IntelliJ. And so when we use IntelliJ, IntelliJ is gonna be a really powerful way for us to go ahead and, uh, and uh, build this, import all of the Java FX uh, code that we need. So let me go here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, go to a new project. So inside of IntelliJ, I'm going to go to new. I'm going to go to project. And so one of my options when I do this, you'll see here under generators is Java FX. So up till now, every time we were generating a new Java application, we were just doing new project and then we would give our project a name here. Instead, I'm going to go down to generator and say, oh, I want to generate a Java FX application. So when I go to do a Java FX application, we can give it a name. So let's call this uh, demo Java FX. Now, one thing you're going to notice is once I choose to do Java FX, I have to use a build system. So a build system manages all of the, the dependency information all of the metadata required for how our application is coded and what, what libraries does it rely on. So up until this point, we haven't been using anything really outside of the base standard libraries that are already included in Java. But now we're starting to talk about using more technologies. We saw this at the beginning of the semester when we had to use uh, JUnit, right? That isn't built into Java's standard libraries. So we had to import the jar files for that. Well, Java FX is the same way. It's not built into the standard libraries of Java. So a build tool makes importing external classes much, much easier. It's the easiest way to build out a Java FX application is the easiest way to build out a JUnit test framework. So here, when we create a package, we can just tell it, oh, I want to do something with Java FX. I want, I want to have all those libraries there. But that means we also have to select a build tool. When I had a new project, I could actually use IntelliJ as my build system. But Java FX, IntelliJ is not, does not maintain uh, uh, um, Java FX uh, build instructions. So we have to select one of the two major build tools that are available in Java, Maven or Gradle. And these are very similar. And I might build a, uh, I might build one of each so we can just test it out. So I'm going to do demo Java FX. And here I'll type in Maven to say that this is my Maven demo. And here I'm going to put my group as uh, uno.edu, I'm sorry, edu.uno. And okay, perfect. I'm just going to use JDK 18. So this is going to use the build system of Maven. So I'm going to hit next. I'm not going to, now I have a ton of additional libraries I could include. Uh, like boot, Bootstrap is uh, additional CSS style sheets that give me responsive design. These are high quality controls. These give me forms. FXGL is used for Java FX game development. So there's different add-ons you can do, but I'm not going to select any of these additional libraries. I'm just gonna hit create. And I'm going to do it in a new window. And so here I have my demo Java FX and I'm gonna use Maven. And so here it's going to launch. And since we're building out a Java FX application in IntelliJ, it's actually gonna give me some starter code so I can ensure that it even runs and then I can modify this as I want. So let's actually run this. So I'm going to run this application. And then here we see we're, so here, this is the build tool you see. So the build tool is now installing all the dependencies when I tell it to run. And we're gonna see that, there we go. We all of a sudden our uh, scene, our stage popped up along with the scene that has a button that has 
this uh, that says hello. And there, and then welcome. And when I press it, it says welcome to Java FX application. Excellent. So we could see it's just that easy to initially create your first Java FX application. Let's take a look at some of the source code really quick that's happening here. So here, uh, it's just defining the package that I gave it from the get-go. I didn't have to define that, but it's a good practice to put all of your source code into packages. Here, it's gonna automatically import all of those classes we were talking about. So we need application. So any time we make a Java FX application, we need to make a subclass from the application class because it's a it's an abstract class. So we need to make it concrete. Uh, we'll talk more about what FXML is later, but we have an FXML loader that will allow us to take in uh, essentially our markup, and we can actually open. Uh, Take a look at that, where we can get that resource. Let's see here, let's unpack this. Let's go into resources. You can see that's right here. I'm gonna open it up so that you can see what that looks like. But uh, I wanna go back to that in just a moment. Okay, so here is the scene class that we talked about. Here is the stage class that we had talked about. Remember, we need a scene and we need a, we need it. We always need a stage and then we can put scenes into the stage. And then again, we're gonna import uh, the IO exception because anytime you're working with any kind of IO stuff, you could potentially throw an exception. So now we're gonna create our subclass to application, which is gonna require us to always go ahead and implement the start method. And our start method requires a stage to get passed into it. And that's done when Java FX invokes that launch method, it, it builds, it defines an initial stage and supplies it. The stage is, again, the window. So it knows how to construct a window for us with the OS, and it gives us a reference to that. Then what we want to do is we want to create this new FXML loader. So FXL, as you notice, is that file extension. And so ML is short for, so FX is, we're using Java FX. So FX in that is referring to Java FX. ML stands for markup. So just like HTML stands for hypertext markup language, FXML stands for FX markup language. And so here in a markup language, you can define content that you could potentially load that into our code base into our start method into a Java data type that we can then use to help build out our scene. So let's go over here really quick to the uh, hello view.fxml. So one thing you should understand if you're not familiar with a markup language is it's any kind of uh, document where you put special instructions in between opening and closing tags. So here, this is saying this is in a form of XML, an extensible markup language. Here, we're importing certain uh, components. So like from uh, geometry insets, from control label, and from layout, the, the vertical box, V box. And then here, we're also going to go ahead and import a button. So here we're we're defining we're defining the same way that HTML defines the content that gets rendered into a browser's viewport. This is defining the contents we want to have inside of our stage. So instead of having to add those as objects, we could define them as if they're as if they're HTML. So again, when I said that the way that graphic user interfaces are designed in a modern approach, this is the modern approach where we create these markup languages that kind of have this nested structure. And here you can kind of see what the graph, what the, uh, what the graph scene, uh, I'm sorry, the scene graph is. So everything is defined inside of this container of a V box. I could have created a V box as an object 
or I can create it inside of the FXML document where this is my open tag here. And this is my, actually it ends here. So everything between the angled brackets. So I have attributes. So for instance, inside my uh, vertical box, I'm going to have a center alignment. So everything in there is gonna be center aligned. I'm gonna have a spacing of 20. I'm going to, inside of my padding, have insets, which has a bottom padding and a left padding and a right padding and a top padding. Then I'm going to have a label that says welcome, that, that has the ID welcome text. And then I'm going to have a button that says hello. And then on action means when that button is pressed. So remember, I said this is event-driven uh, 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 programming practices. So when a user presses the button, the action that happens in response to that button click is going to be what's bound to this on action attribute. So here it's going to be on hello button click is going to be effectively a method call. And so if I click into the hello controller.java, let's just see what this looks like here. This is importing the FXML, right? Because this is being referred to inside of X, uh, the FXML. And also we're going to import the label class from the control package. So I'm going to do the annotations of FXML and say, okay, we're going to have a label that is our welcome text. And this is our definition. This is our method on hello button click. We're going to have the welcome text set welcome to Java FX application. Let me run it again and say when I click the text for welcome text, which is defined right here, right? That's the ID. So this ID is a label, but it doesn't have a value inside of our markup language yet. So we're gonna, we can set that, we can set that text here inside of this.java file. So our Java files can interact with the, with the FXML. And so we're not required to use this. We can build everything out in a very object-oriented way, but if you're gonna learn how to use Java FX, I would implore you to kind of learn how to use the markup language tooling as well, because this is the same way we build out our web applications, a similar approach. And again, so if we go back and uh, run our application here, just so you can see this again, we have that hello button that has that light. And when I press it, then what had no text is going to set the text to welcome to Java FX application. See, and that was in response to me pushing that button. Okay, and so that's just a little walk through to a relatively simple, but still deep, pretty deep because there's a event handling there, there's event listening there. We're using FXML and we're kind of just removing ourselves from exclusively working in an all, in a POGO, in a POJO way, in a pure ordinary Java object way, right? We're starting to interact with other tooling using Java FX, using the FX ML. So we're starting to see how we can start. And so in order to do that, that's why we use these annotations as well. Say, oh, we have to, we wanna interact with the uh, FX ML document to be able to define this function or to define this ID so that these have, these are connected to our Java source code. So that's why here it says FX colon ID welcome text. That's then connected to this thing as a label or this FX controller with hello controller says this is connected to this Java file. So the last thing I kind of want to highlight here with our like 
initial hello application is the fact that I use that initial build tool and I select it Maven. So let's let me just highlight what Maven was doing. So every Maven kind of project. So again, Maven is the thing that installed all of these dependencies. You can see Maven right here and all the Java FX. So it uses palm.xml. And again, whenever you see ML as a part of a file extension, that means markup language and markup languages are pretty consistent. Look how similar these two look to one another, right? So this is a markup language that's specific to give instructions to Java FX. And so again, the instructions that we're feeding to Java FX is in between the angle brackets. And then the actual content would be between the angle brackets. I mean, uh, would be between the opening and closing tags. So notice, uh, so a open tag. So for instance, if I have a V box here, I need to also close it. And everything that's between this V box and this V box, so it'd be these elements are the children nodes of this V box. And that's that's building out our uh, graph, our scene graph. And so everything that's a member of this padding, right? Because this is the open tag, this is the closing tag, would be the elements that are inside of there. And then insets doesn't have, that's a leaf node, right? It doesn't have any nested children. So one nice thing about uh, markup languages is it allows you to visually see what the scene graph looks like because you usually indent inwards. You, we can see the same thing with the palm file here. So the palm file is a markup language that defines all of the dependencies and properties and the versioning and the name of our Java application. So IntelliJ, so, Ma so IntelliJ, you can use Maven as the build tool. And what Maven does is it can parse this XML document, this palm file, to know how to build out your Java application. So for instance, inside of dependencies here, we can say, oh, one of the dependencies is Java FX controls. And another dependency is to, it, we need the Java FX, FXML, and we need to have a JUnit. And you can see it's just, it keeps, it just, it, it includes everything here. The version of Java we're using is uh, a plugin source target 18. That's the version of Java I'm using. So yeah, you'd see that everything is nested in a tree-like structure where this is the root node and then it has children and that has children. And we know what the children are because they're between the open and closing tags. And the same thing is true with uh, HTML. So the palm file is how our build tool knows what to include and launch. And so it's not too dissimilar towards the FXML on how we define the membership of what goes into a scene. Now, again, I could have also done that by just instantiating objects. So you get that, you get that diversity with Java FX, whereas you can only do an object-oriented approach with Swing. Let me show you one more other approach, let's do the, the uh, Gradle approach so we can just compare and contrast. So I'm gonna do a new project. It's gonna be the same project. I'm gonna do Java FX. Here, I'm gonna call this Java FX, but here I'm gonna use Gradle as my, my build tool. And pretty much it doesn't matter which one you wanna use. That's the highlight I wanna show here. I'm gonna, inside my group, do the same thing. I'm gonna do EDU, UNO. Here, my artifact demo, Gradle, uh, Java FX Gradle here, Java 18. So I'm going to do next. I'm not going to include any of the libraries. I'm just going to tell it to create. I'm going to do it in a new window. So if I use Gradle instead, notice it's the same application. It builds out the same. IntelliJ is going to go ahead and build up the same demo project. But what's going to be different here is when I go to build this, Ah, uh, yeah, there we go. And when I hit the button, I, I get the same thing. All the code is the same. So really what's gonna be the difference is, where are you? Now 
if that's there. Is this is is going to be this this module dash info dot java. So the way that Gradle works is it'll go ahead and produce a module dash info dot java file, and then that it goes ahead and manages your contents on. But you'll see using these are pretty similar in terms of build tools. And a lot of this, for the most part, is pretty invisible to you. Uh, you can manually update the POM file if it's Maven. You can manually update the, uh, usually Gradle uses a more JSON-like uh, way. So notice inside of the module-info.java, it's going to use a more uh, JSON-defined approach to be able to define what your dependencies are. Excellent. But I just want to show you the two different build tools and how they're relatively similar. You can use either uh, Maven, which uses XML. Gradle, if you wanted to manage your dependencies, would use JSON-like uh, encoding for all of your metadata. But that's going to be the big distinction. You have to use one or the other, though. You won't be able to use IntelliJ if you want to create a JavaFX project uh, using IntelliJ. So I'll just close out that. I'll just close out that. Excellent. Um, does anyone have any questions about what we just did in terms of that demo? How are people feeling about this kind of uh, this inspection of JavaFX? Any any insights or opinions yet? Oh, good. Yeah, that's again. That's 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 what it's aiming to do. It feel very HTML-y. Now you don't have to. That the thing is, you don't have to use the uh, kind of markup language approach. But it's a very powerful approach because it's less verbose. It kind of keeps everything organized in terms of your scenes contents and it puts that responsibility of defining all of your scenes contents someplace that's different than the core logic of your java fx application so it's like a separation of responsibilities that it allows you to do which is why that kind of html css javascript divide had started to kind of develop on the browser side of things. It's because there was a recognition of saying, oh, the HTML allows me to define what are the contents of the scene that's displayed inside of the stage of the browser's viewport. And then the CSS comes behind it and says, okay, this is how we're going to design everything in a way that it's aesthetically beautiful in terms of deciding what colors and what sizing and what paddings and everything like that. Uh, without having to embed those, all of that clutter, all of that noise inside of just the general uh, makeup of what goes into the viewport. And then finally, the JavaScript helps define what is the logic. Yep, it's that structure styling logic divide. So JavaFX gives us that same kind of metaphor of being able to identify those different responsibilities for a graphic interface and say, okay, I should put my structure in the FXML document. I can put my styling inside of the CSS documents, and then I could do all my logic inside of Java. So essentially, it's it's very much like a web application, but it's with Java instead of JavaScript. And it's for desktop applications as opposed to web applications. You can't do this for the browser, but you could do this for your own independent application. Excellent. Is there any other questions? Well, if not, we're out of time for today. So we will pick up from where we left off tomorrow. Everyone have a great day.